This video will focus on uh, many different types of problems that uh, are involved with calorimetry. So essentially I'll go through a whole bunch of different types of problems kind of one at a time. You can stop between and try them yourself, but essentially I'm going to talk through kind of how to think through each of these. So for the first one, you have 5.6 kilojoules of energy absorbed by a reaction. Um, and if that happens, what will the final temperature of the water be that surrounds it if initially the temperature was at 45? So the first thing I do for most of these thermodynamic problems is draw a picture. And that's because it's really hard to figure out what's happening without thinking about the system and the surroundings. Okay, so in this case, the system is that reaction that the problem talks about. Um, and what I know about the reaction is that the reaction is going to take in 5.6 kilojoules of energy. Okay. If a reaction takes in 5.6 kilojoules of energy, that energy had to come from somewhere, and that energy usually comes from the, from the surroundings. So the re map, that means the surroundings gave up 5.6 kilojoules of energy. Okay. So what is in the surroundings right now, this is essentially the water right, that surrounds the reaction. Um, and the other things I know about the water is that the water has 75 grams, uh, that the water's temperature was initially 45, um, and I think that's about it, okay? So basically this picture helps me see kind of that energy transfer concept that something has to be giving it up and something has to take it on. Now, if the reaction absorbs energy and is positive, that means the reaction is endothermic because it's taking energy in. The uh, energy of the water is going to be a negative 5.6 kilojoule. So moving forward, what am I trying to solve for? I'm trying to solve for that final temperature. So if we're dealing with temperature, we're going to be dealing with uh, degrees Celsius, right? Um, now, my one hint to you guys with these problems is the idea that um, if you're solving for the surroundings, then you're mostly going to start your problem worried about the system. Okay. Uh, now, in this particular case, my system information that I'm giving you is already right here, that I have 5.6 kilojoules of energy. So that is the information I'm going to use. Okay. Knowing from our last slide that if my system gained 5.6 kilojoules of energy, that means that my water had to give off 5.6 kilojoules of energy. That's what we're going to use here, okay? So anytime you're dealing with your surroundings, just in general, we would say for your surroundings, you have a temp change. So you're going to deal with that Q equals MC delta T. Okay, That's how you quantify when there's a temp change. So for this problem, I already have my Q because my Q for my surroundings is just my negative Q for my system. And Q is going to have to be in kilojoules uh, because my, my um, specific heat capacity is in joules. Okay? So that is my energy in joules. And then the mass is for the surroundings, so for the water, right? So I'm doing everything for the surroundings. My initial temperature of the water is 45. My final temperature of the water is what I don't know. And my C always for water is at 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. So that then is what we plug in to our equation to solve for the final answer, okay? So, Essentially, we have that Q, which is negative 5600, equals some mass times specific heat capacity times change in F. Plug that into your calculator, um, and you should get a final answer, temperature final, of 27 degrees Celsius. Okay? And that should make sense if we go back and look. Right, so in the end, the water had to give up energy and put it into the reaction. So the energy of the surrounding should go down because it's losing energy, right? And the reaction's gaining it. So it makes sense to us that our temperature should go down from what it was before. Our next problem is very similar to the last one with some a slight shift to make it a little bit harder. So we're burning propane using this chemical equation. 
And again, we're asking for final temperature. So I'm gonna draw a picture and it's gonna look very similar to the last time. I have my surroundings, which is my water. And then I have my system, which is my reaction. Now I have a little bit of information about the system this time opposed to the last time. So I know that I have 2.08 grams of propane. I know that when the reaction happens, it generates 104.6 kilojoules of energy. So now this time I know that that energy is flowing out to the surroundings, which means I know the water ends up gaining 104.6 kilojoules of energy. I also know the water uh, mass is 500 grams. My temperature initial is 20. My temperature final is something I don't know again. And then my specific heat of water is that 4.18. So very similar information to the last one with this one added component that we're gonna have to deal with. Same question as the last one. Is this burning and or exothermic? Because the energy is negative, that means it's exothermic. I'm again trying to solve for my final temperature of my water. Because I'm trying to solve for that final temperature of the water, that means again, I'm looking for degrees Celsius for that information, okay? And then we can solve. So again, in this problem, I'm trying to solve for my uh, surroundings. So I'm gonna start with my system, trying to figure out what I know. And again, what I know for my system is the amount of energy released by the system that 104.6 kilojoules, and that means that my um, surroundings ends up gaining 104.6 kilojoules, okay? Again, my surroundings has a change in temp, so I'm gonna Q equals MC delta T that guy. I have a Q again, I'm gonna put it into joules because specific heat capacity is in joules, so I always have to joules for MC delta T. I have a mass of water being 500. I have an initial temp being 20. Don't know what my final temp is. And then my C again is that 4.18, just like it was before. So now if you solve for the Q equals MC delta T, you'll get a final uh, temperature of 70. And again, that should make sense from what we already know. Our water ends up gaining energy from the uh, system, which means the temperature final will go up, and that makes sense. Continuing on with this problem, now we're going to solve for something called the molar heat of reaction, and that tends to be a moderately confusing concept, okay? So we're trying to solve for the molar heat of reaction, and what that means is I'm trying to solve for the amount of energy released per mole of the reaction. So earlier this week when we looked at thermochemical equations, oftentimes our reaction had some kind of um, delta H component as part of the reaction, and that is called the molar heat of reaction. That's the amount of energy that is either released or absorbed per mole uh, given the balanced chemical equation. Okay, So we're going to try to solve for the molar heat of reaction in this particular case. Okay? My problem gives me a heat right here, but that is not a heat per total reaction, okay? That is the amount of heat that my reaction gave off, right? I produced that amount of heat when I burned 2.8 grams of propane, okay? So for my reaction, it's written as for every one mole of propane, but in this particular problem, I didn't burn a whole mole of propane, I burned 2.8 grams. So this amount of heat I'm giving you is the amount of heat per 2.8 2.08 grams of propane. So to get a molar heat of reaction, a kilojoule per mole reaction, essentially we have to have a ratio between uh, energy and mole that is scaled up to the size of my equation. Okay, so when I'm trying to solve for molar heat of reaction, it's similar to trying to solve for like a molarity, where what I need is an energy number and a mole number, and that when I divide them by each other, essentially that would be my final ratio. Now there's a little bit more to it than that, but that's the main concept, okay? I give you an energy number, right? I know in this problem that I can produce this amount of kilojoules, but it's that amount of kilojoules per 2.08 grams of propane. Now to do the math here, I need to have it in moles, and hopefully you know that if I'm in grams and I want moles, I can just use the molar mass, which is amazing that that exists. 
right? So I can get a mole number for propane. And that is, again, the amount of moles that produced that amount of energy. Okay, so that's the amount of moles that produced that amount of energy. So in order to figure out then a uh, heat of reaction, which is the amount of mole, the amount of energy per mole, I would take the amount of energy that was produced by the number of moles I had, and that would be an energy per mole reaction. So here it is, sorry, two, two zero kilojoules per mole. And I'm gonna put RxN down here, super small, to remind myself that this is the energy per of the total reaction. Now, there is one piece that we'd have to worry about potentially depending on the problem. In this particular case, I use propane and the coefficient here for propane was just one, okay? Because of that, my final ratio could just stop here because when I divide it, it would be per one. If I'd been given information about oxygen or carbon dioxide or water, I'd have to take this final ratio and multiply it by the coefficient. And that's because the final answer is per mole of total reaction. So it's per mole of really whatever the coefficient is. In this case, it's one. In other cases, it might not be. So we'll see problems like that here in a sec. Moving forward, next problem, we've got some grams of NH3 being made in the bomb calorimeter. We've got water again around the outside. So drawing our picture, it's gonna look very similar to what we've been doing, right? We have our system and we have our surroundings. Our surroundings again is our water. Our system is our reaction. In our system, sorry, we know that I have 15.10 grams of NH3 being made. And that's about all the information I have. Cool. So then about the water, I know I have 255 grams of water. I know the initial temp was 59.3 and I know the final temp is 21.0. So slightly different information this time. What I'm trying to solve for is the same as the last problem. I'm trying to solve for that molar heat of reaction. And in order to have a molar heat of reaction, my final label is gonna be kilojoule per mole reaction. In order to solve this then, um, it goes back to a little bit of what I kept saying in that this time if I'm trying to solve for my system, which I am, my molar heat of my reaction is my system, right? I want information about my system. Oftentimes what you're trying to solve for is not where you start. So I'm gonna start with my surroundings and what I know about my surroundings in order to get me information about my system. So to solve for information about the surroundings then, I'm gonna use Q because MC delta T because the surroundings are where there is a temp change that's occurring, okay? In this time, in this particular problem, I don't have any information about Q, which is why this problem is different, but I do have information about delta T, so I can solve for Q. So I know my mass of my water. I know the sea of water is always the same. I know that my uh, delta T was I, Final ended at 21 and I was 59.3. So with that calculation, I can figure out how much um, energy was in this case released by the water into the reaction, right? So this is the amount of energy that went from the water into my reaction, which means my reaction gained this amount of energy, okay? So in terms of my ratios, this is an energy amount. Okay, so if I change that into a kilojoule number, that's going to be my amount of kilojoules that this particular reaction was dealing with. Now, that is not an amount of energy per mole reaction or per any kind of mole number because I didn't use any of these prescribed recipe amounts. I used 15.10 grams. That is my uh, stoichiometric number I'd have to use in relation to getting an answer. Okay, so to get to a mole reaction, I've got to use that number and get it to mole, which of course we know we can do because molar mass is our friend. Okay, use your periodic table, and that means this is the amount of mole. So when I produce this amount of moles, I also absorb this amount of energy, okay, given this particular reaction. Now, I want an energy per mole reaction. And this is where it gets a little bit weird in that I want an energy per mole 
And because I have NH3, my per mole reaction would have to be per two moles. And that's because um, if you think back to thermochemical equations, whatever this energy is, it's going to be per two for NH3. So the way I always set this up is the same, right? We're very systematic in chemistry because that's how we don't make mistakes. And that's that when I'm solving for this ratio, I have an energy amount, that's per kilojoule. I have a mole amount, and that's this. And then to get it up to a mole reaction, I rewrite this in relation to how many moles it is for the substance I'm dealing with, right? So this is per NH3, and in my per reaction, it's per two moles of NH3. So I would rearrange to solve for this answer right here. And if I do that, I get an answer of um, 92.0 kilojoule per mole. And that'll be now per mole of the whole reaction because I used this two for NH3. Right, so that step right there is a little bit weird in terms of uh, comfort as people try to solve these types of problems. So here's our last example problem for these guys. And I'm gonna do the same thing I have been doing, which is to draw a picture to better understand what I'm dealing with. I've got my surroundings and I've got my system. And then I'm gonna label everything I know. So I ran this reaction uh, and I know that my water, my surroundings was 251.5 grams. And I know that it went from an initial temp of 22.3 to a final temp of 49.4. Um, I don't have a lot else of information, but one thing I do have this time is an actually a heat of reaction already. Okay, so all these last two problems, I was essentially trying to solve for this number, and this time I gave it to you. So this is the amount of energy I have per mole of whatever the uh, thing is I'm using in my reaction. Okay, uh, so from that information, I already know some things. I know that this is exothermic uh, energy is produced. I know that per two uh, moles of magnesium reacting with one mole of oxygen, I can make two moles of magnesium oxide. I don't know a lot specifically about this problem, but we can get there uh, through some thinking. So what I'm trying to solve for in this case is my mass of magnesium oxide, so this guy. And what I know about it in relation to how to figure it out is I know the amount of energy my water changed by. And by knowing the amount of energy my water changed by, I can kind of backstep from there. Uh, so label obviously for mass will be grams. And again, I'm trying to answer a question about my system because the question is asking about the reaction. So to solve this, I'm going to start out with the surroundings. Okay. So what do I know about the surroundings? Well, once again, I can get information about Q because my surroundings ended up changing temperature. So you're going to see that there's kind of a pattern in terms of how to solve these. So I know that my M times my C for water times my change of temp for water would be the amount of energy that the water, uh, in this case, probably absorbed based on the fact that this reaction was exothermic, right? So given this information, I know that my water took in this amount of joules. And if my system took in that amount of joules, that means my surrounding, oops, sorry, my bad, if my uh, surroundings took in that amount of energy, that means my system gave off that amount of energy, right? And we can make that into kilojoule, which is what we want. Now, in the last few problems, I would take a kilojoule amount and divide it by a mole amount, and then I'd have my uh, molar heat. But in this problem, I already gave you a molar heat. So this actually goes back to the problems you were doing earlier this week. Okay, in that I want to get to a mass amount. I can get to a mass amount through a mole amount. I can get to a mole amount through energy because I have the molar heat of reaction. So again, you've got to remember what this number means. That means that is the amount of energy produced per 
mole. And in this case, since I'm worried about magnesium oxide, it's per two moles of magnesium oxide because that's the mole for that reaction. Okay. Now, I didn't produce that amount of energy. I produced a smaller number. So that means I have less than two moles of magnesium, but we can actually figure out exactly how many doing more math. Okay. So, oh no, I messed up. Make it stop. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So um, if I figure out what I'm doing, uh, if I start out with this amount of energy, okay, I can go from kilojoule to mole using that um, relationship that the reaction gave me. And then I can always go from moles to grams using molar mass because it's the absolute best thing that exists. And it makes us all happy and makes us forget that the world essentially is, you know, insane right now. And that gets us to our final answer. So I'm sure some of this feels a little bit magical. Uh, it's a lot of problem solving. It's a lot of thinking. I think the pictures help a lot. Uh, but essentially, if you look at it, there's kind of two things to hang your hat on. And that's that the surroundings is going to be a Q, MC, Delta, T types problem. And the system will be a molar heat type problem. So we're combining uh, Q, MC, Delta, T from last week with the uh, thermochemical equation stuff from earlier this week.